you described an average day with him as that was fucking shit, mate. That's fucking shit. You're shit. You shouldn't be here, which gives me echoes of Don Logan from Sexy Beast. I don't know if you've seen Sexy Beast, but it's it's quite in the head kind of thing. Um, now the book is out, available in all good retailers, I presume. Am I right in saying you had a cup of coffee with Eddie the other day? And I'm, I'm interested to know how that went. So obviously I did like my launch. Um, we gave it to, I think the Telegraph had the first kind of dibs on it. And... Um, of course, they like pick up on all the juicy headlines of, of some of the Eddie things, the Eddieisms, we'll call them. Then he turned up like a day later at my house, and I was like, I just fronted. I was like, shit, have you seen the Telegraph? And he's like, nah, mate. And I'm like, he has. He definitely has because <laughs> he sees everything. The, he's like the eye of bloody Sauron. He, he sees everything, that man. I just said, look, mate, they're, they're focused on the juicy stuff, and they've conveniently left out the um, – the, the gratitude kind of aspects of the book and, and whatnot. But um, yeah, it, you know, he, he calls it what it is, you know, that, that was shit. But then you go train, he's like, good today, mate, much better. He commands that sort of, that respect. Um, and I think respect's born, well, for, for me, it's born from a good place. It's not out of fear. It's just kind of out of a place that he, what he did for me. Uh, he gave me a lot, he gave me a career um, in, in my view. Because I'd played it, a lot of games for England, a bit like Hacks. Had a lot of good times, a lot of good memories. But when you when you when you sit where we are now, you look back, you're like, what did you win? Who did you win? Where did you win? What memories did you create on the field? And I think all the best ones for me were actually working hard, achieving, and winning things. Um, you know, we throw back to like places like uh, Queenstown with with Tins and and Hass. We we had a great time there, but that, that's just another memory. But in terms of the best ones, it's all through hard work and winning. Do you think he got the best out of you because of the edge that he brought and because of the way he challenged you almost mentally, really? Because you, you talk about your life under Stuart Lancaster and, and Martin Johnson. I don't know whether those were similar relationships or different, but I'm just interested as to whether Hask has spoken, and, and we had Eddie on the other day, and it was, it was you know, there's, there's great af affection between them. And Hask has said publicly, Eddie got the best out of me almost by cuddling me. Did Eddie get the best out of you by challenging you mentally in the way that you sort of called out in the, in the paragraph I read out? Yeah, it certainly wasn't a cuddle. Um, no. Hask, he had, a, he had his role. He had his role was like the, the, the jester and, and all, all you had to do, if I'm right, was, was run hard and, and hit people hard. Whereas, you know, my, my, my sort of role was being one of the oldest players um, and not being very good. Because as a player, we're not going to get you much better, Dylan. But what I like about you is your work ethic and your mindset and your, your set piece is good, you know? So he goes, as being one of the older players, you're just going to have to work harder than anyone else here and be the example of hard work. So while Hass had to just run hard and tackle hard and be funny, I basically had to just outwork or be seen to be the example of work ethic within that group. He provided plenty of opportunities for me to display that.